Let's see. Uh, hi, Ricky. Architect working on a new mass timber project. Come across some questions about concealed spaces or different things. Are they allowed? Are they not allowed? Do they have to be sprinkler protected or not? Can you help clarify? Can mass timber projects have concealed spaces? And if so, what are the requirements for protecting them? Thanks. Signed, Architect 1. That's a good question. Let's dive into it today. Hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks, and as you heard in the introduction, today's video is going to be all about concealed spaces in mass timber buildings. Specifically, we're going to try to unpack the questions surrounding can a mass timber building have concealed spaces, and if it does have those concealed spaces, if they are permitted, what, if anything, do you have to do in terms of protecting the mass timber within the concealed spaces? Now, first thing we're going to talk about in the video is the importance of defining the specific construction type that you're choosing. Now, it's not one size fits all. Actually, why don't you pause the video right now and take a guess down in the comments below. How many construction types does the International Building Code currently allow you to use in a mass timber building? Now, after you've written your guess down below there, I'm going to tell you the answer is actually eight. There are eight different construction types within the IBC in which mass timber can be used. And those types are 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B, 4C, 4HT, and 5A and 5B. So we have eight different construction type options. Obviously, depending on the size, scale of the building and the occupancies within it, some of those may be ruled out right away, but we do have quite a few options to look at. And the reason that I bring this up at the start of the video is because the construction type that we use is gonna have a big impact on defining, can we have concealed spaces and how do we protect the mass timber within those concealed spaces? Now, it's probably helpful early on in this video to also define what exactly is a concealed space? What do we mean with that term? Now, it's not a term that's defined in IBC, but generally speaking, when we talk about concealed spaces, we're referring to small areas, uninhabitable areas of a building that are created by components or subcomponents of an assembly. So some common examples would be a dropped ceiling below a mass timber floor panel, a raised access floor system on top of a mass timber floor panel, soffits, those types of things. Now, Section 718 of IBC does address concealed spaces, and specifically it addresses two things that we need to look at if we do have concealed spaces, and those are fire blocking and draft stopping. And those do apply across really all the construction types we're going to talk about today. But it's important to note here in context of Section 718 of IBC that there is a very distinct difference between a combustible concealed space and a non-combustible concealed space. So the difference there is whether or not there are exposed combustible materials within the concealed space. The code does have a few exceptions to that for, for things like, you know, insulation on electrical wiring, for example. And that may be permitted as a combustible material, but if we have the actual structure, say a mass timber floor panel, an eye joist, a truss, something like that, that does create a combustible concealed space. Not to say we aren't allowed to have that, but we need to understand that that is a combustible concealed space and therefore we need to protect it according to IBC requirements. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video the importance of choosing the construction type for our mass timber project. Now types 3 and 5 and the subcategories within each 3A, 3B, 5A, 5B, those specific construction types don't have limitations or definitions around them in the context of concealed spaces. So what is that basically saying? It's saying that we are permitted to have concealed spaces in a type three and a type five building and type three and type five do permit the use of mass timber. It just doesn't address how we need to protect those concealed spaces other than the fact that, that it does say we need to have specific fire blocking and draft stopping within them. Now, really what we need to do though is turn to the applicable sprinkler standard that we're using in the project. Let's assume that this mass timber building we're designing is a sprinklered building. And so we have several options there depending again on the size, scale, and occupancy of the building. And if 13 and 13R are some options that we might have available to us, most commercial and multifamily projects nowadays are using the full NFPA 13 system. So in terms of protecting combustible concealed spaces, we would then turn to the provisions of NFPA 13 because it does list specific requirements in terms of how we need to protect those combustible concealed spaces. 
Now, the interesting thing is if you look in the sprinkler installation guidelines of NFPA 13, it does specifically address the requirements for combustible concealed spaces. Generally speaking, it either has to be a sprinklered concealed space or it provides several very specific options that if we follow one of those options, then we don't need to sprinkler the concealed space. So right off the bat there, that of course is going to be an option for us. In our master building, let's say we do have concealed spaces, the first option would be just to simply extend the sprinkler coverage into those concealed spaces. Now that might not always be a desirable option, whether it's due to cost or, or other limitations. So we can also see what are the other options within NFPA 13 for omitting sprinklers in concealed spaces. Now, if you dive into those specific provisions, one thing that you'll probably notice is that those do appear to be written very specifically for what I would call light wood frame construction, where it's addressing a combustible concealed space, having things like solid sawn joists, composite wood joists. So it doesn't really address what to do in a mass timber building. I think that you can draw some parallels there though. Of course, this is something to discuss with the building official on your specific project, but drawing the parallels there saying, what could be some other potential ways to omit sprinklers in these combustible concealed spaces following the guidelines that NFPA 13 lays out. That could be things like compartmentalizing the concealed spaces to volumes not to exceed 160 cubic feet. It could mean something like filling that combustible concealed space with non-combustible insulation, or it could mean covering all of the mass timber surfaces within the concealed space with non-combustible materials, such as a gypsum wallboard. So that's type three construction and type five construction. Once we move into type four construction, again, we have four subcategories, 4A, 4B, 4C, and 4HT. Once we move into type four construction, the IBC now is much more prescriptive in what we need to do in order to permit the use of concealed spaces, but protect them. So we still need to look at the draft stopping and fire blocking requirements of 718. However, contained within the construction type definitions of IBC chapter six are very specific guidelines in terms of how to protect the mass timber within these combustible concealed spaces. They are different across these four subtypes. So we'll take a quick look at each individually. Within the 2021 IBC type 4HT projects do now permit concealed spaces. Previously, concealed spaces were prohibited in type four construction, type four previously, which has now been renamed as 4HT. So the 2021 IBC does now permit concealed spaces in type 4HT construction and basically gives us three prescriptive options there. The first being to sprinkler the concealed space, the second being to fill it with non-combustible insulation, and the third being to protect all of the mass timber surfaces within that concealed space with a layer of 5 8 type X gypsum wallboard. Now that works very well, I think, in a concealed space such as a drop ceiling below a mass timber floor panel. What if we're looking at a raised access floor system above a mass timber floor panel? Well, the first two options are potentially still valid, right? Sprinkler the concealed space, fill it with non-combustible insulation. Again, that might not be the favorable scenario. So the third option that we mentioned, cover the mass timber with a single layer of 5 8 type X gypsum wallboard. We may not necessarily want to do that either if we're using a raised access floor because of concerns with that raised access floor sitting directly on top of a layer of 5 8 type X gypsum wallboard and potential crushing that gypsum wallboard with the pedestals of the raised access floor system. So this is another area that you'd want to talk to your local building official to determine what their interpretations are and if they're comfortable accepting a different type of non-combustible material to cover the mass timber systems within this concealed space when you have something on top of the mass timber panel. Concealed spaces in a type 4C building, very similar to type 4HT with one exception. Essentially here, the options are much more limited. We don't have the option to leave the mass timber exposed within that concealed space. Unlike 4HT where we could leave it exposed but sprinkler that area or fill it with non-combustible insulation. In a 4C building, we always have to cover the mass timber within the concealed space. Essentially what the code says is cover it with a non-combustible material that provides a minimum 40 minutes of fire resistance rating. So a single layer of 5 8 type X gypsum wallboard will accomplish that for us. And then once we jump up to type 4A and 4B, the requirements for both of those are the same and it's very similar to 4C. It's just that rather than 40 minutes of protection, we have to provide 80 minutes of protection. So this would be two layers of 5 8 type X gypsum wallboard directly applied to the mass timber surfaces. And then we have the drop ceiling or the raised access floor system above or below that to 
act as the concealed space materials. Concealed spaces and mass timber buildings can be a confusing topic. It is something that we see a lot of questions here at Woodworks about. So if you do have some additional questions after watching this video, questions related to your project, please do reach out. That's why we're here. We're happy to be a free resource to you, the design community. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you so much for making it to the end. And until next time, we'll see you later.